Good evening and welcome to our Saturday evening service of evening prayer with prayers of healing. I welcome to all of you who are gathered here in person tonight and to those of you who are worshiping with us online. If you're worshiping with us online, take just a second to sign in, leave your name in the comment section. Feel free to interact with your fellow worshipers throughout the service, uh, greeting them, uh, leaving signs of peace, uh, leaving uh, also your prayer requests. We won't pick those up in real time, but we could pick those up uh, as the week goes on and add them to that. Uh, we're glad that you're here with us tonight. Uh, again, our service is a service of evening prayer with prayers for healing. We begin with our dialogue. God is our light and our salvation. From the rising of the sun to its setting. For with you is the fountain of life. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you called light into being and you set light in the sky to govern night and day. In a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, you led your people into freedom. Enlighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May your word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are merciful and you love your whole creation. And with all your creatures, we give you glory. Through your son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. O Lord, I call to you. Come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch before my mouth, O Lord, and guard the door of my lips. Let not my heart incline to any evil thing. Let me not be occupied in wickedness with evildoers. But my eyes are turned to you, Lord God. In you I take refuge. Strip me not of my life. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let us pray. O God, our defender, storms rage around and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear and preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from 1st Kings. At Horeb, the Mount of God, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Haziel as king over Aaron. 
Also, you shall anoint, anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shephat, at Abel Meholah, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes the sword of Heziel, Jehu will kill. Whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes by the law that a person who does these things will live by them. But righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend to heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side of the Sea of Galilee while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him, saying, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God, the Gospel of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. This week, we witnessed some spectacular reminders of our human mastery over the forces of nature. Just a week ago on Sunday, we watched the, the SpaceX Dragon X capsule splash down in the Gulf of Mexico, returning to Earth two NASA astronauts who had been living for two months on the International Space Station, which even now is orbiting high above our planet. On Thursday, and again tomorrow, we will remember the 75th anniversary of the first and only wartime detonations of nuclear weapons. And we are forced to remember that there are currently nine countries on our planet with known nuclear capabilities, amassing approximately 14,000 weapons that harness the basic power of the universe and can vaporize a city in seconds. And yet, and yet, for all our power, 
In the same week, we witnessed a tropical storm move up the coast, uproot trees, and turn off electric power for hundreds of thousands. And we were remember, reminded just how vulnerable we are to the violent and chaotic forces of wind and water. And of course, there is this ongoing spread of novel coronavirus and the disease it causes in our own country and around the world, showing us that the country that first harnessed the power of the atom for its own will and its own purposes has been unable to contain or tame the dread, deadly spread of the tiniest of little viruses. We just heard the story of an event that took place thousands of years ago on the other side of the world. It's a story of a group of people in a small boat struggling all night to make headway against wind and waves. Think for a second of how different they are from us. Consider the miracles that we consider commonplace that would utterly amaze or astonish them. Imagine a first century disciple of Jesus sitting here tonight knowing that that we have rockets that are powerful enough to put objects in orbit that can look down now on this planet from a vantage point once thought reserved for the gods. Or that we have in our possession bombs that, that look and feel like the very wrath of God able to vaporize a city in seconds. How, how terrifying our world must appear to the ancients. And at the same time, under the terror that we would feel to have to live in their place and time. Think of life in the desert heat without air conditioning. Think of sickness and disease without modern medicine. Think of the utter helplessness and hopelessness we'd feel to be trapped in our social condition under a crushing poverty and left without voice or vote or any hope of approving our life short of a miracle. How different we are from those first disciples. And yet, and yet even tonight, so many years removed from them, we can understand their futile struggle in the night against wind and waves. And yet, I think we can also empathize and feel what it's like to be a human being in a small boat in the middle of a great big storm. And I think we can understand even what it means to see Jesus walking to us on the sea in the storm. Just like we can understand disciples, even if we actually never rode a first century fishing boat through a storm in the night, I think we can know in our hearts what it would be like to see Jesus walking to us on the sea in the middle of that storm. It makes sense that Jesus is there. It makes sense to see Jesus walking on the water, even if we've never seen anything like it before and will never see anything like it again. It's amazing, but it makes sense to us and we can picture it in our mind's eye. What is strange, truly strange about this story, in my opinion, is what happens next. When Peter shouts out, Lord, if it's really you, ask me to come to you walking on the sea. And then Jesus says, sure, Peter, come. Put this picture in your mind. The disciples are in a boat. The wind is strong against them. They're struggling futilely to make any kind of headway in the gale. Jesus appears walking on the water. And seeing him, the disciples are terrified. They think that they're seeing a ghost. But Jesus cries out to them to calm their fears. Don't be afraid. It is I, Jesus says. And then, Peter for some reason shouts, if it's really you, tell me to come to you on the water. And Jesus says, come. Huh. Then Peter gets out of the boat, starts walking on the water to Jesus, and when the wind hits him, Peter seizes up with fear and drops into the water, shouting, Lord, save me. And it is in this moment that we have this absolutely stunning image of Peter slipping below the water, reaching out his hand, and Jesus confidently standing on waves in the wind, reaching down to grasp Peter by the hand to pull him up and save him. 
It's the picture that the Satan Solemn Theater used last year as the cover image of their stage production of Jesus' life. It's that picture, Jesus reaching down, Peter reaching up below the water, that is a snapshot of Jesus' mission. It's our testimony too. When I was sinking down, sinking down, sinking down, Jesus raised me up. When the wind and the wave and the storms of life overwhelmed me and dragged me down, Jesus reached out and he raised me up. When death opens its mouth to devour me, Jesus is there to bring us out of the grave and to give us life. We know this story, we know this parable, we know this image. It's our story, it's our song. But if we had time, how great it would be to just spend a few hours together hearing your story, sharing our stories together about Jesus, how Jesus has saved you, and how we count on Jesus to save us from the powers of sin, death, and evil. Jesus saves us. But there's just one thing I still want to know. Why did Peter want to walk to Jesus on the water? And why did Jesus give him the okay? Uh, I, I guess that's two things, right? Let's rewind that image in our mind and see what Peter says. Jesus tells the disciples in the boat, don't be afraid, it is I. Jesus isn't a ghost, and Jesus is here. It's all okay. Peter responds, Lord, if it's really you, command me to come to you on the waves. Why does Peter want to walk on water? It appears to me that Peter doesn't really trust or believe Jesus' word or promise. He doesn't believe Jesus is who he says he is. Remember, at the end of this story, Jesus will chastise Peter for his lack of faith. For all my life, and all the times I had read this story, maybe even the many times I had preached on this story, I had thought that, that Jesus was chastising Peter because he lacked the faith to walk on water. But that really isn't the case, is it? The truth of the matter is Peter lacked the faith to stay in the boat and to let Jesus be Jesus and to trust God's word and God's promise. It's not Peter's great faith that leads him out of the boat and to walk on the water only to see his faith slip away when confronted by the wind. No, Peter's lack of faith leads him out of the boat and into the depths. And only Jesus can save him and set him right, right back where he belongs, in the boat, now with Jesus. And if that is the case, then the point of the story is not that with just a little more faith, we too can walk on water. We too can be the master of wind and wave. But the truth of this story is that we have already observed and come to know that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, the creator of this world, the master of wind and wave, the one who orders chaos and the deep and calms the violence of the storm that Jesus has come to save us, and he saves us by coming to us, by getting in the boat with us and calming the storm. Way back at the beginning of the story, Jesus commanded the disciples to get in the boat and head out to sea. For human beings to make it across a lake, we need a boat. Only God rides the wind and waves and storms. Human beings are carried through the flood in the ark the glorious and gracious gift of a God who loves us and preserves us through the storm. It is not faith in Jesus that leads Peter to climb out of the boat. It is his hubris. It is Peter's desire to be like God, to master wind and wave on his own terms, and to make believe that somewhere Jesus told him to do it. So why does Jesus tell Peter to come? Well, maybe we just have to sink ourselves before we can come to know and trust God. And that is what might be the most terrifying aspect of this story as we hear it in our ears today. In a world where we can send rockets into orbit, 
In a world where we can vaporize a city in seconds. In a world where those two great achievements have now combined to take the form of destroyer of worlds, rockets topped with nuclear warheads armed and ready to go, and set up in a world governed by people who so very often think that they are gods. You see, we, like Jesus' disciples, have been rowing against headwinds for millennia. Maybe now, maybe here, maybe at last, we can trust that Jesus, God's Son, our Lord, is coming to us through the storm and will yet save us from the power of wind and wave. After all, that's what he has come to do. Come quickly, Lord Jesus, and save us. Amen. Please join me in confessing our faith, the faith that proclaimed by Mary as she heard the good news of what God was doing in sending Jesus. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For you, Lord, have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have come to the aid of your servant Israel to remember the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God and Savior. We remember tonight that our Lord Jesus healed many as a sign of the reign of God come near. And he sent us as his disciples to continue this work of healing with prayer, with the laying on of hands and anointing. In the name of Christ, the great healer and reconciler of the world, we now entrust to God all who are in need of healing. Let us pray. Loving God, our source and our final home, we give you thanks for the gifts of life on earth, for our human bodies and all you have created. In your great mercy, Hear us, O God. Merciful God, by the wounds of your Son we are healed. Bring your saving health to all people. In your great mercy, hear us, O God. Holy God, your Spirit came upon us in the waters of baptism, and you brought us into the communion of saints. Renew in us the grace of baptism, by which we share in Christ's death and resurrection. In your great mercy, Hear us, O God. Mighty God, your Son Jesus brought healing and wholeness to all. Bring your healing presence now to all who are sick or in pain. Grant hope to all who are discouraged or in despair. In your great mercy, hear us, O God. Compassionate God, the strength of those who suffer. Bring hope and peace to all who are in mental, physical, or spiritual distress especially those who are on our heart this evening and those for whom we have promised to intercede, especially Georgine, Paul, Elaine, Denise, Charlie, George, Dave, Jim, Joe, and Donna, for Bill, Dennis, Andrew, Brett, Diane, Paula, Kenny, Shirley, Matthew, Kathy, Vanessa, Paula, Robert, Linda, Karen, Frank, Tracy, Adam, Allison, Marie, Ed, Dave, Alessio, Michelle, Richard, Megan, Elsie, Kathy, Gabby, Ben, Kathy, Evelyn, 
and Isla, Ed, Sue, Leslie, Cyrena, Judy, Dolores, Andy, Joseph, Damian, Mary Ann, Joseph, David, Dorothy, Dorothy, John, Tom, Stephen, Corinne, Maisie, Dennis, Barbara, Justin, Stan, Sean, Lila, Skipper, Ronald, Kathy, Tess, Ethel, Les, Rick, Gail, Sue, Chuck, Amy, Noah, Nicholas, Ricky, Chris, Aaron, Chris, Eileen. For the grieving Hilferty family, in your great mercy, hear us, O God. Almighty God, source of human knowledge, give skill, wisdom, and compassion to all who provide medical care. In your great mercy, hear us, O God. Loving God, our creator and redeemer, give gentleness and courage to family members, friends, and caregivers of those who suffer. In your great mercy, hear us, O God. God of great and abundant mercy, with your presence, sustain all for whom we pray, drive away their suffering, give them firm hope, and strengthen their trust in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Sisters and brothers, I now invite you to receive a sign of healing and wholeness in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. If you wish, you may lay your hand upon your heart or upon your head or a part of your body from which you desire healing. You may also wish to lay a hand upon your heart and reach out your hand to pray for someone else who you know is in need of healing tonight. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, be strengthened and filled with God's grace that you may know the healing power of the Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Living God, through the laying on of hands, grant comfort in suffering to all who are in need of healing. When they are afraid, give them courage. When afflicted, give them patience. When dejected, give them hope. And when alone, assure them of the support of your holy people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. Share a sign of God's peace with each other. If you're worshiping with us online, leave a message of peace for your fellow worshipers, uh, both those gathered here and, uh, and wherever uh, they're gathered tonight. We worship God also with the sharing of our gifts and our offerings. We give our offerings in praise and thanksgiving for all that God has done for us in Jesus Christ and for the sake of Jesus' ongoing mission and ministry in this world. We have been entrusted to carry out this mission in Jesus' name, bringing the good news of Jesus to people in this community and around the world. Take a minute now, if you are watching online or worshiping with us online, to make an electronic gift through the St. Paul's website, or consider uh, sending in a gift uh, to St. Paul's Lutheran Church, 445 Old Coast Road in Edison, New Jersey, 08817. We thank you for your generosity. We thank you for your support and partnership uh, in this mission and ministry we share and in the life of this community uh, where we find Christ present for us. Let us pray. Into your hands, almighty God, we place ourselves, our minds to know you, our hearts to love you, our wills to serve you, for we are yours. Into your hands, incarnate Savior, we place ourselves, Receive us and draw us after you, that we may follow your steps. Abide in us and enliven us by the power of your indwelling. Into your hands, O hovering spirit, we place ourselves. Take us and fashion us after your image. Let, us com let, let your comfort strengthen us, your grace renew us, and your fire cleanse us, soul and body, in life and in death, in this world of shadows and in your changeless world of light eternal now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. A few announcements before we leave tonight. Uh, reminder, no midweek Bible studies until the last week of August, so no Wednesday afternoon or Thursday evening study. If you would like to join us on our quest to read through the entire Bible in a year, please uh, let me know. I can send you those reading lists. Uh, some of us have already begun, but since it's a year-long program and uh, years kind of work in circles, you could pick up where we are now and then just keep going past that point. Uh, so please, if you would like to, feel free to join us. For those of you who have already embarked on this journey, uh, we're going to go through another week and then we're going to kind of check it and just see how things are going. So continue to collect your, your questions, your observations, and share those uh, in some time. Uh, our in-person gatherings, as we have here on Saturday nights, will continue next week. Uh, uh, the Saturday service will be a service of Holy Communion, and that will be next Saturday, August 15th at 6.30 p.m. Uh, please use the link sent out in this week's uh, virtual bulletin or in the sign-up reminder in the middle of the week to sign up for that. That way we'll be sure to have uh, things prepared when you come. Also this week on Thursday evening at 7 o'clock, we're going to have a family uh, night here on the back lawn. Uh, there's also a link in the virtual bulletin to sign up for that. If you would like to share some food with the food pantry, uh, the doors that you see behind us, uh, in front of those doors is a green bin, and you can place your non-perishable food donations there. If you would like to volunteer, uh, please feel free to talk to Jane Brady or call the office, and they can put you in touch with Jane Brady. If you're here in person tonight, Jane is sitting over here, and uh, you could uh, speak with her uh, from an appropriate distance on your way Receive now God's blessing. Remember that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Father, creator of the universe, Jesus, the Christ, Lord and Savior of the world, and the Holy Spirit, the advocate and comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Now, aren't you glad that one of the requirements of discipleship is not that you have to go out and walk on water? As you go out tonight, don't try to walk on water. You're not required to walk on water. It is not a prerequisite. Only trust and believe that Christ has saved you through his death, through his resurrection, through his abiding presence with us. And then go in peace and share that good news. Thanks be to God. Good night.